Welcome to Hungry Gen. Don't forget to subscribe. The topic of my message today is going to be the heavenly currency. Somebody say heavenly currency. Yes, heaven does have a currency and it is faith. Somebody say faith is the heavenly currency. We have to understand that with our faith we are able to receive answers from God. Jesus says it is only faith that pleases him. So when we come to God, we believe in what God says through his word and by his spirit. Amen. So when we come to God, we must come to God in faith, believing he will do what he said in his word. We have to understand that God's thoughts towards us is more than sand on the seashore. Whatever he wants for our life is more than what we want for our lives. God says he knows the thoughts of heart. He knows the desires of our heart. So he knows better than what we know for ourselves. So when we come to God, it's not like, God, give me just a little bit. God's like, I know what you want. And I want you to have it more than you want it yourself. Did you guys ever want to help somebody to like uh, get, help them to get out of a bad relationships or get out of debt? And you want to help them more than they want it themselves you guys ever tried doing that to somebody at the end of the day they're like man you're trying to you know, steal my girl you hey. i'm like i'm just trying to help you that's how god is many times we feel like when we come to god and we're like god you're trying to take my fun you're you're boring god's like i want you to have fun i want you to to have joy i want you to have peace. i want to take your depression i want to take your sickness and you look at me as i'm the bad guy with faith that's how it is when we come to God with faith God says I know what you want I know your destiny I know your desires when you come to me come to me by my word and through his spirit amen church I want to read through the scripture it says in Romans 12 2 it says this and it's a famous scripture that says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind our life is a result of our mind our life is a result of our faith our belief what we believe in our lives that's what we're going to receive why our neighbor sometimes has more than we do is because they put a demand on God more than we did it is it is the same person the same mind you know faith is the same faith could be a little bit bigger or it could be smaller but it's the same request we put on God to receive the answers that we have amen church I want to give you an example. There's a there's a hundred dollar bill and there's a dollar bill, right? So both of these are on the same paper. They have somewhat of a similar ink, but with one you get much more than with the other, correct? Same thing with faith. With your faith, you can either request of God for a hundred dollars or you can request from God for a dollar but the thing is up to you how much you request for some people a dollar is a lot which is it is a lot you can get yourself a, a, a cheeseburger right you can get yourself come out you can get yourself a dollar drink whatever it may be and with a hundred dollars it's also to some people is a lot and you can just with a hundred buy so much for my wife it's just one second and it's gone Nevertheless, it's how much of that do you put on God? Amazon is green pastures and still waters for some of the girls. Come on, somebody. It's like, God, let, give me the access and I'll prove to you I'm faithful. <laughs> and that's just what faith is. How much demand do you put on God to receive what he wants for you? If his thoughts are much greater than us, than our thoughts towards ourself, towards our life, towards our marriage, towards our health, towards our future. Doesn't it just make sense to align our thinking and our mind to his word? Doesn't it just make more sense for us to think like God thinks? Because when we think like God thinks, we'll be able to receive the answers that God has for our lives. See, we have to understand many times what we want is we don't know what we want. Isn't that true sometimes? You're like, you want that thing, you get it, and you're like, man, this thing sucks. Why did I even get it? 
but God knows the desires of your heart so when we get what God wants us to get for the reason that God wants us to get it we will have peace we'll have content and we'll be happy with it so it just makes so much more sense to be able to align our thinking, our mindset, and our faith to what God wants through his word and by his spirit. And then we'll be able to live a life that God has destined for us to have in Jesus' name. Amen, church? Faith is the heavenly currency. Faith is, is the visions and, you, and dreams that we give God every day. And we begin to inquire and we begin to walk with God and we begin to ask God, I believe that you can use my life to be an influence in my generation. God, I believe that through my hands, even though nobody in the past in my family ever healed the sick, that believe that through your word, you said that through my hands, I will lay on the sick and they will recover. That's a demand you put on God. Your hand could be used to steal, to lie, to kill, to hurt somebody, or it can use to heal the sick. It's just how much faith do you have in God to use your hands? How much faith do you have in God to use your mouth to spread the gospel or to spread lies, to spread gossip, to spread rumors? You put the demand on God on what you have. And sometimes we see people in the world being used by God so much and we say, oh, that guy is lucky. No, it is not luck. It is not skill. It is not talent. It is just they came to God and said, God, you said it in your word and I'm standing on your word. My circumstance changed. My thoughts change. My, everything around me changes. But you said in your word that heaven and earth passes away, but your word stays the same and your word never changes. Come on, somebody. I want you to get out of this this message is that your circumstances are not as important as the state of your mind the faith that you have inside of you is more important than what you're facing around you on a daily basis and God wants us before he does anything in our lives God first wants to change us and our mind before he changes our circumstances God does not want to change your circumstances before he changes your mind and your faith because if he changes your circumstances and you're not changed you'll go back right into what you had it is it is proven you give a poor you give a poor person a lot of money he'll sooner or later he'll go back to being poor you take a, a drug addict out of his out of his uh society out of his friends and all these things but he's not delivered sooner or later he'll go back into that thing if his mind is not changed, if his habits are not changed, sooner or later he'll end up exactly into that. And God knows that he needs to affect our mind. He needs to affect our faith on our daily basis. Because if he changes that, it's just a matter of time. Your circumstances will catch up to the level of your mind and to the level of your faith. Ask your neighbor, how much demand do you put on God? Ask your other neighbor, what is your heavenly currency? Is it my dollar bill or is it a hundred? God on purpose creates circumstances to shape our mind and to shape our faith. On purpose. We have to understand. There's some of us we face unfortunate situations. And, and you know, I don't have the answer why, how, and, and why this person do it or why that or that. But God on purpose shapes circumstances to build your faith and to prepare you into the blessing that God wants to give you. The blessing that God has many times comes with responsibilities and it comes with weight. Just like any structure, the higher you go, the bigger the foundation has to be. God has so many great futures, so much great destinies inside of us that is, uh, that is locked within us. But God says, I want to prepare your mind. I want to prepare your faith. In order for you to go there, I want your character to be built so you can handle that blessing. And that blessing does not turn into a curse. You know, I've seen so many times where people receive a blessing in their life and they get so stressed out because they can't pay bills. They get so stressed out with business because there's so much weight on them and then turns out that God had a blessing for them, but for them that blessing became a curse because they, their mind and their faith weren't ready to receive it. How many times we've seen a relationship break, marriage fall apart? Why? Because marriage in itself, it's a beautiful thing. It's a blessing from God. But if you're not prepared for it, it can't break you. 
under the pressure of temptation, under the pressure of I need to say sorry, under the pressure I need to leave my friends and spend time with her or him, under the pressure of oh you're always asking this, oh it's always about you, it could break if you are not ready. If your faith is not built up to a place where God says now you're ready to receive a blessing, that blessing can hinder us in our walk with God. Amen church? Many times I see people, you know, um, going from church to church, you know, going from relationship to relationship, going from place to place, and they begin to escape the circumstance that is preparing them for the next level. We have to understand, just like Joseph, he could have not skipped the dry pit because dry pit was a necessary lesson for him to encounter the throne many times we just want the throne we're like God you have a great destiny I'm gonna heal the sick I'm gonna do this and this and God's like chill I got a dry pit waiting for you you know you do the talking there you know God's like you know I, I got I got that mean boss in your life that you need to learn how to submit the pastor the parents that you think are so bad I need you to learn to submit to them why because the place where you are going to is a slippery place it's a high place where you cannot afford to make a mistake come on we have to understand that the trials are the soil in which man's faith flourishes it's a it's a soil it's something that God wants for you it's not that God hates you God just wants to prepare you for it you know it's I have a son and he loves to drive a car every time I come home he wants to get in behind the wheel and just wants to like yeah where's the pedal he can't reach the pedal so he looks up over the thing and then he just slips down and just slams in the brake I we going like five miles an hour but I can't give him a car why I love him I love him so much I can't give him a car same thing with God we're like God I want it right now God's like I wait for the time I want to prepare you the once you get the car you'll be able to handle the car the insurance the gas every time you hit the curb you're gonna have to buy yourself a tire because that's how it works in real life daddy can't pay all the bills and and that's what it is certain blessings we're like man I just want to be there I want to I want to preach you know I want to heal the sick I want to have a great business I want to just be married already you know why is God taking me through all these relationships give me marriage already God's like you don't know what you're asking yet certain answers are being de delayed certain answers are not you know coming for us right now because God says there's a dry pit there's a slavery there's Potiphar's house there's a jail that's still waiting that when you do get to your palace and your throne you're ready to handle it and you don't lose it amen church we have to see God as a good father and you know having children right now you know you realize there's certain things you just can't give to your kids because you love him so much after he stuffed down the fifth candy he says daddy more chocolate I'm like no more chocolate <laughs> your tummy's gonna hurt I'm gonna have to wipe your diapers at like two in the morning because your diarrhea because <laughs> there's certain things that you can't have because as a good father you learn to love them you learn to understand that there's a timing for everything we do not understand certain times that the timing that we are in is just a preparation but we already want it to be our destination don't mix those two up destination and preparation are two different things there's certain things that take time have you ever seen videos where a guy's like I'm gonna I'm gonna lift this uh, two pound to 45 two two plates and they get on the thing and the thing crashes crushes their chest they didn't prepare properly let's just say it all that's how it is many times we, we take down that weight and we're like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this God's like you're gonna hurt yourself but we're like God you're mean you know you're supposed to give me an answer already and then and then it crushes us and it hurts us and God says you know I'm still here I'll still accept you I'm still gonna help you I'm gonna still gonna go forward don't misinterpret whatever is your preparation with your destination amen church number two is that renewing your mind is a process it takes time it takes time it's 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 never a quick a mindset is not built in a day it's not built in in two it takes time to be able to build a faith mindset to receive from God many people feel like man all these years I'm running around with doubts with fear with anxiety and all of a sudden I come to church I have faith and bam God God give it to me and God's gonna give it to you no it's it's a mindset it's a it's a faith you to daily walk with God that it takes time for you to get to that place 
and we have to understand that there's also positive faith and there's negative faith and there's a difference between those two because positive faith it stands in the word of God negative faith is the doubts negative faith is that fear that anxiety that gossip that lying that cheating the cutting corners that's the negative faith we can do all we want is build a positive faith but we if we don't get rid of the negative faith we'll begin to drain our life of the things that God has for us if where's Edwin or Vladik my bad I just want to demonstrate demonstrate a few things that demonstrate a few things when it comes to positive faith and to negative faith we when we have positive faith it's it's like this water smart water come on holy water so you can put that down hold this when we build our life we have we're building with positive faith and we fill it up and God wants to take us to a place where our faith is overflowing and we begin to get answers but the negative faith is like you know somebody said something against you you're like oh you know how could they say this and you go around and you start gossiping and, and negative faith is like this drill it makes holes this, this is a stubborn and it begins to drain your life of your positive faith negative faith is like fear God said in your word that everything your hand touches will be blessed but negative faith can you hold it is that another drill is it we start draining your life of the faith that God has for you it's that lying somebody said something you're like, oh no how could he say that? it's that gossip it's those rumors it's the fear and that anxiety God said in his word and you're like well what if God's not going to do it? well what is this you begin to drain your faith from God with that negative faith sometimes we're like why can't I receive an answer from God because you filled your mind with so much negative faith that you don't have any faith left with all the doubt you come to church you pray oh God is good he is risen you go home and everything's dead and you're like well that's for just church no God is with you all the time he goes with you wherever you go are you standing with God and you proclaiming or are you just saying that God I have all these things and there's these holes in your life that you can't get rid of the bad friends the bad music the bad movies the bad influence on your life those those chismosas you know for what I'm saying you know they drain you come on I don't even know how I know that word okay <laughs> we'll have an altar call for them <laughs> it's those things that drain your faith and we each one of us we have that it could be social media where, where you get filled with charge with the word of God you come home and you start watching all these things and then so all of a sudden your faith that you had believing in God it begins to be drained and you're like you begin to question God for everything oh if God would have said what he would have done in my life wasn't that taking place you begin to drain your faith you know, we had a powerful message people get healed you come home you have a headache and you're like well you know if God would have done it he would have done it here you know it's just you know it's not for me you drain your faith you come home you see your kids misbehaving you see your kids not coming home and you're like well you know me is me and my house to serve the Lord that's that's for that family that's not my family you begin to drain your faith God says there's there's got to be a place where you get rid of those holes you you close those holes that you only have the positive faith that when you come home you see a dead situation and you begin to speak to the dry bones to come to life become to live you see your marriage and you begin to speak to that marriage you see that sickness you begin to speak to that sickness is there's nothing left but positive faith come on somebody those holes those holes may be experiences those holes may be time what if God doesn't do it it's already been a year but it's not happening you know last time I prayed for sickness even got worse those are the holes a man of faith has nothing else but God's Word what God's Word said is true and I believe nothing otherwise some people are like why are you so positive all the time why do you so believe why because negative faith doesn't do me any good negative faith only robs me doubt only steals my joy it steals my comfort it steals my peace it takes a cup half full and makes it says it's half empty I don't want that kind of faith I want the faith that says with God all things are possible that if you believe it in Jesus name it will take place in your life don't base your faith 
on the results of your prayer your faith cannot be based that if I pray today and it doesn't happen tomorrow that means my faith is useless you have to base your faith in he is my healer whether he heals me or not he is my deliverer whether he delivers me or not he is my blessing provider whether I see the blessing now or later this is what God says and it's true someone As we talked about that, um, it takes time. It's consistency and perseverance that really makes... You can take a seat. Sorry, man. <laughs> consistency and perseverance is, is the key when it comes to building a mindset and building your faith. It's, it's not just... Uh, there's some times where we come to God and we ask for something and we get it right away and it's awesome. I, dude, I love those stories that people come to God, they ask for healing and it takes place right away. For some other people, it takes days. Other people takes weeks, some people takes months. There's some people who've been praying for their marriage for years, but it's it's that faith that says that's consistent and that's perseverant all the time. You know, God, God is consistency Himself. God says, you know, I was faithful to Abraham, I was faithful to Joseph, I was a faithful to Abraham, to Isaac. I'll be the faithful for you. I've never changed. I was always the same. If I said it, I will do it. I'm not gonna change with you. If you pray it today, I'm not gonna go back on my word. I said it and I will do it. And it's that consistency that coming every time to home group, coming to life group, coming to Sunday service, to Wednesday service, and just being consistent with God. Say, God, you said in your word, I believe it. You said in your word, and I'm putting the demand on your anointing for my life. Don't give up on God when things don't seem right. Don't begin to lose your faith when, when you prayed for a job, but you lost, you know, that promotion. You were supposed to promote you, but you actually lost the job. Don't give up on God. Keep your faith that He is my provider. You know, when you feel like, you know, that you're sick in your body and there's evidence of pain, begin to look at God as, God, you're my healer because sooner or later your circumstances will line up to the level of your faith and your thoughts. Amen, church? You can't go with your feet where your mind and your faith hasn't been or else that place will crush you. You have to have your faith go to that place and it has to be there. Many times people are like, oh, how'd you get to that place? I was in this place already a year ago with my faith and with my mind. I was ready, you know, as a church, we were in this place years and years and years back. We were proclaiming that this place was going to be filled. So you are a result today of the faith and the mindset that we had years in the past. You have to have a, a mind that is not in your current. It's not where you're at. It has to be years ahead and saying, God, I know the place that you're taking me. I know the destiny that you have for me. And it's not here and it's not now. But there's a place where Jesus will shine through me. There's a place where his power will work through my hands. Where his anointing will come out of my mouth and heal the sick. My marriage is going to be restored. My kids will serve God. There's going to be a place there. Don't settle your faith and your circumstances. And your surroundings let your faith let your feet and your mind and your faith go to a place where God has promised for you that is a place that God has for each one of us for each one of us is different maybe a career maybe a business maybe it will be a relationship that you know that you never seen take place in your family maybe to be a, have a healthy body because everybody in your family dies prematurely out of a sickness maybe it would be just to graduate college whatever it may be God has a destiny he says you need me in order for you to get to that destiny you can't do it by yourself and God cannot do it by himself he needs you and we need him as much as we work with God we also need to pray with God we have to say God I believe that you're going to take me there without you I am nothing you hold the breath in your hand God you are my everything I cannot do it without you and God says I'll take you there you might be in your dry pit but remember there's a palace coming you might be in that in that jail where you're falsely accused and you feel like everything is just wrong if God would with me with me where are you now God says you're just one step closer to your palace and to your throne amen someone and the last one is the Holy Spirit will will build with what you give him He'll only build with what you give him. He cannot build with nothing. He has to build with your faith. And uh, Pablo, can you come? You can either give God a teaspoon. This looks like a, more of a teaspoon. 
Or you can give him a shovel. Can you pick that up? That looks like a serious spoon. You can, it's, the choice is yours. Is what you give the Holy Spirit. He will still build with something. You can either build with doubt and you will get doubt in your life. You can either build with faith saying, God, I believe that you can do it. And God says, all right, let's build that. You know, building is not a quick process. Building takes time. And, and you can either come to God, which is fine if you, if you start off with a spoon. It's just no problem. Each one of us, we start with that. But don't end it there. My point to you is, is how much demand do you want to put on God? Because God says, all of heaven and all my power is available to you. How much can you believe that I will do for you? And some of us, we're not satisfied with the shovel. We want a truckload. And God said, it's fine. Because I already died for that. I already paid the price for that. What I'm trying to say is, your God is a good God. He's a good father. There's never a time that you can come to a good father and God compares our earthly father, the best earthly father you can possibly think of. He says he's an evil father in comparison to your heavenly father. He's, he's an evil person. And, and you, when you come to him, you can't just ask God, just give me a little. I just want to survive. God's like, I don't want you to survive. I want you to thrive. I want you to reach your destiny. I want you to reach your full potential in your life. And put that down thank you god will not give you what your neighbor has he'll only give you the things what you give the holy spirit to build with you can't compare yourself with your neighbor just you know just because your neighbor has a toyota and you got a prius you know it's fine your faith might, might be different i don't know you know just because your neighbor has a green grass and yours is just rocky don't compare your chapter one with somebody's chapter 20. Don't compare chapter 10 with somebody's chapter 5. God has different destinies for every single person. And you just have to understand, you run your own race and you have to say, God, this is between you and I. You know, the God is using somebody else to preach and now you're like, oh, I was here for five years and I didn't get it. No, run your own race. Ask God, God, what is it that you want me to do? Because what you want me to do, that's what exactly I want to do. I just don't know it yet. Might not be the, the thing right now. But that thing right now will lead you to the place where God wants you to be. Joseph was in his dry pit. Maybe he was at a Potiphar's house and he's like, man, I already reached it. God's like, not yet. So don't, don't compare what you have right now and say, God, is this all? Because God says, until I see you face to face, I'm not done with you yet. I'm not done with you yet. I have so much more for you in store that you can ever imagine. What we give Holy Spirit, he uses that to build and bring forth in our lives there are answers that God gives for a teaspoon which is fine sometimes we come to God and we ask him for small things and it's nothing wrong with that there's answers also for a shovel God when we come to God with a shovel and we put and God says God I believe I believe I believe and God says I will do for you it just depends on how much of that you give to God what I, what I want to challenge every single person this, this morning is that God is a good God. You can't see God in the bad light that, man, he always wants to take my Sunday two hours. And, you know, if they, time goes over a little bit, man, they robbed me. God's like, I, I want to prepare you. I want to set you up. I want to put you in a place where your faith is at a place where you receive blessings from God and you, Jesus shine forth through you. What do you pen, put demand on God this morning? What do you believe in God he can do for you are you just settling for God to be your your you know 9 to 11 on Sunday morning or you believe actually that God will give you power to do what you do because it's only through Holy Spirit that he'll make you do better than your best you think you're good but with Holy Spirit you're you're super good you think that you arrive but until you experience the power that will flow through you through the Holy Spirit you haven't reached anything yet with Holy Spirit, you will live the best life. With God, you will have the best marriage, the best family, the best business. Whatever it may be, only with God, you're able to do that. Amen, church. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, 
and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.